I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. These famous lines spoken by Robert J. Oppenheimer had reminisced within the minds of Americans during the 50s as the Trinity bomb test was conducted on the 16th of July, 1945. Oppenheimer quoted the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, where he quotes, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. As dramatic as it sounds, Oppenheimer was right. Little did he know that nuclear weapons would soon spread throughout the entire world and lock the world in a race for superiority that would change the world forever. This race will soon continue over 50 years and would be known as the nuclear arms race. His revolutionary theory of special relativity. The nuclear arms race brought triumphs such as the influence on becoming an international superpower by yielding such powerful weapons compared to any country and they were able to make a big scientific breakthroughs within a short amount of time and tragedies such as many enemy countries getting a hold of their own powerful nuclear weapons and the threat of using nuclear weapons for war. The nuclear arms race had started after the first bomb test in 1945 and it was a competition between the U.S. and the U.S.S.R. It was a competition to see who could make the most powerful weapons between the two countries. The race had gotten tense between the two countries in 1952 when the first H-bomb was tested by the U.S. This had been an ongoing event in history until the Soviet Union had collapsed in the late 1980s. Although the nuclear arms race was a major tragedy for not just the US but the whole world because of the spread of nuclear weapons within many different countries on a global scale. The United States was able to achieve its global superpower status after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the first to make the H-bomb. One of the downfalls of this is the fact that so many people had died. About 226,000 people had died just from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. A scientific tragedy is the process of making the atomic bombs. The process was too long to mass produce them. It was too unstable to make, test, and then use the bombs. Another scientific tragedy is the Tsar Bomba. It was extremely powerful, but it's too powerful to use. It was so strong that it would kill whoever drops it. The blast radius was 22 miles, but it would even spread up to 34 miles away of the original bomb site. During the mid-1960s, a treaty was under negotiation, which was called the Non-Proliferation Treaty. The main objective of this treaty was to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and weapon technology. It also promoted more peaceful uses of nuclear energy and maybe even nuclear disarmament. The negotiations began in 1965. It lasted until 1968 when the treaty was signed by 189 different nations. These nations were divided into two groups, nuclear weapon states and non-nuclear weapon states. The nuclear weapon states were states who had built and ran tests on nuclear weapons before January 1st, 1967. These states include the US, the Soviet Union, the UK, France, and China. The treaty also prohibited the nuclear weapon states from helping or encouraging the non-nuclear weapon states to build nuclear weapons. This treaty is seen as a triumph as it made steps heading towards nuclear disarmament. During the last couple of years of the Cold War, members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO and nations under the Warsaw Treaty began having talks on February 1987. These talks were to find ways of how to get rid of the difference in equipment and capabilities of the military forces of the nations of which they represented. These talks were successful as the Treaty of Conventional Armed Forces in Europe was signed on November 1990. 
The treaty was signed by 22 nations, including the U.S., Canada, France, the U.K., and the Soviet Union. The treaty set limitations on equipment such as tanks, artillery pieces, and combat aircraft, which also limited the capabilities of surprise attacks and large-scale offenses. The signing of the treaty is seen as a triumph as it marked the end of the U.S. and Soviet arms race. The nuclear arms race itself was not a single event itself, but a chain of events that had been spread out throughout the mid-20th century to the early 21st century. As early as the testing of the Manhattan Project to the UN adopting the Nuclear Weapon Ban Treaty on the 7th of July, 2017, there was many victories that had also suffered tragedies alongside. The United States had become the sole superpower of the world after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The first bomb test was a huge milestone for the United States, but a major tragedy for future weapons inspired from it. Ever since the 1960s, the world has lived in constant fear of a possible Third World War in which nuclear weapons would annihilate the entire population of Earth, which had reminisced until the early 20th century with tensions between the North Korea and the United States. It goes to show the nuclear arms race could not achieve triumph without its resulting tragedies.